Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, it is always an honor and a pleasure to spend some time with you in the Word of God. We believe in you. We believe that God has great purpose for each and every one of you. And so we would like to invite you to become partners in prayer with us. There is no financial obligation to become a partners in prayer. The only thing that we ask of you is that you email us. That's right. Email us at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Email your prayer request. We believe the word of God where it says the fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. We pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. We pray for you. We put you before ourselves. We know that the position that God has given us as righteous, obedient servants of God, as we pray for you, God will take care of the things that we need. And so we invite you to become partners in prayer with us. Once again, our email address is aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. Send us your prayer request for yourself, your loved ones, your ministry, your organization, that vision that God has put within you as it is being done according to his will. We will touch and agree with you that it shall be done on earth as it is in heaven in the name of our Father, his Son, Jesus Christ. We would also like to invite each and every one of you to visit us on our website. On the website, you have the opportunity to view our ministry schedule. Uh, we are currently uh, teaching courses over at True Life Community Worship Center, new ministry courses. We are also teaching on the five-fold ministry during this new minister's class. And uh, if you are in the Tampa Bay area and you would like to attend, the classes are the first two Wednesdays of every month from 5 o'clock p.m. to 6.45 p.m. Uh, because I need you to make it for Bible study. I need you to get to Bible study at your appointed time. And so classes are from 5 p.m. to 6.45 p.m. We will also make available uh, a audio version of the course being taught. And so we will give you details about that coming up very soon. So if you're unable to attend, if you are outside of our area, you will have the opportunity to purchase uh, the new minister's uh, teaching courses uh, tonight. Well, tomorrow, I apologize. Tomorrow we are going to take a look at the Office of Apostle. And so we have the understanding that these are functions, not titles. They are called to function. They are called to position. And so we would like to share that with you. Also on the website, you can find our publishing division, Hope and Truth Magazine, our uh, bookstore. Uh, we are revitalizing our bookstore. Uh, the, the workbooks from our School of Ministry, you can purchase them online via Amazon. And so our bookstore is shifting uh, with publications connected to the School of Ministry, as well as some other publications that that we have done. And, and so God is, he's shifting us, he's growing us, he's doing an awesome, awesome thing. And, and we are so excited to share that with each and every one of you. As we're looking over our word of God today, and if you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life. I am Elder Angel Ferguson on this awesome, awesome April the 9th, 2019. I am expecting the unexpected to happen. I don't know about you, but I can feel it in my spirit. I, I, I'm I expecting the unexpected mighty move of God. I won't take anything less. And so the reason why I won't take anything less is because I don't have to. I know who my father is and I know where I stand. And so the word of God we're going to share with you today is, is connected to your vision. It's connected to the growth to where God has shifted you to and he's elevated you to and he's enlarged 
your territory when a territory is enlarged when you grow in Christ and you go and grow into a new level and he's called you to a higher call there are things that comes with the enlargement of that territory but fret not because God has given you the territory and so you can't get into the territory and back up you can't look at what God is about to give you and do through you and back up because of the giants in the land if he said it if it's something that he told you he's going to do if he has opened up the door for you let me tell you something he has equipped you he knows that you can handle what is there now the enlargement of the territory it is not empty ground it is a land flowing with milk and honey it is a good plenteous fruitful ground the stage is set you have to walk therein and the enemy is going to oppose you I don't want you to be misguided I don't want you to get a misunderstanding. The enemy is going to try and fight you on every hand. But here is something I need you to understand. You made it to the land. You made it. You got there. The vision has been birthed. The elevation has been done. It has been established. You are there. Now the enemy's job is to frustrate you. And to make you think you can't handle the enlargement, the new territory, the level of growth. You've graduated to this. You've labored for this. You've labored in prayer. You've labored through fasting. You have submitted yourself. You have sacrificed. You've given up some things. You've died in your flesh. And because you've done those things, God said, okay, I can graduate you to the next level. But the enemy will send tactics. The enemy has something going on in that land that you are about to step into. You're already in that land. God has a work for you to do in that land. That land could be a new career, a, a new ministry, expanding a ministry. It could be a new marriage. It could be in reaching out to family members that you haven't been able to reach out to before. That new territory, that new ground that he has placed you in because he needs you to, to do a work in that land. He needs souls set free in that land. He needs deliverance to take place in this new territory. See, this new enlargement of territory was not for you just to add a notch on your belt or, or just to add something to your resume to say, I have now conquered this. He put you in that enlargement, that in territory because he needs some souls to be set free. He needs some shackles to be broken. He needs some chains to be destroyed. He needs a heart to be set free, a mind to be changed. He needs someone to be, to, to be converted and set free. Yes, there are giants in the land. But you were sent in that land so that that same giant can receive deliverance. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing in this time. I am forever encouraged. Yes, there are giants in that land. But I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And because we pray for and we accept as we have received the spirit of discernment, we can see the spirit of the giant operating in the land. And so we know what to pray for. We know what to bind. We know what needs to be cut off from the root. Don't play with the giant. Don't entertain the giant. Don't give credence with the giant. But subdue, 
tear down in the spiritual realm. That giant needs deliverance. That giant has a soul that needs to be set free. That giant has a mind that needs to be changed. You too had to be delivered. You too needed to be set free. We still are going through deliverance day by day. But I just want you to be aware there are things that come with the enlargement of that territory. And so we're going to go over to uh, the book of Numbers. We're going to go over to the 13th chapter. And I pray that this enriches your spirit. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast, please feel free to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Today's date is April the 9th, 2019. Ask for what comes with that enlarged territory. And we will provide you with the scripture text of what we are sharing with you on today. Let's go over to the word of God. We're in the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter beginning at the 25th verse. First of all, let, let me back up because you have to be careful who you send to spy out the land. Know who labors amongst you. Where is their mindset? Where is their prayer life? Are they faithful? Where is the level of their faith? There is the faith of salvation and then there is the gift of faith. Where is their faith? Do they have the gift of faith? Are they trusting and believing in God? Do they question the very word and intellect and directions of the Holy Spirit? Do they take God's word as just that, believing that it shall be? So first of all, know who labor among you. If you can't labor in prayer, or you, if you're not faithful in fasting, if you're not uh, growing in the knowledge of God, if you are content with being where you are and stagnant, I, I can't let you go and search out the land for me because you can't handle that position. The report you bring back will not be good. Let's get over to the word of God. Uh, it says... And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and back ward and, and brought back word unto them unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And so, uh, I gave you a good report, but there is a but. But you have to catch the tone of the, the, the next couple of verses. Yes, uh, uh, it's flowing. With, it, it, it's a good opportunity, but if God said it, it's so. There is no but. Now, if you just want to give me a projection of what I'm going to deal with, that's that's one thing. But if you want to add a but that that wants to make me back up, that's something totally different. So that's where the spirit of discernment comes in. It says, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great, and moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalaks dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the, court, the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are, are well able to overcome it. But the men, here's that but, but the men that went up with him said, 
we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. This is a spirit that comes to frustrate. This spirit comes to frustrate and it says, I see your vision. I see the fruit of your vision. It's wonderful. But in the same token, you, you're, you're, you're speaking two different levels out of your mouth. But you can't handle it. You're telling me, yes, this is a good land. Yes, it's flowing with milk and honey, just like the man of God said. God said, yep, I heard what God said. It's exactly what God said through the man of God, through the man of one of, woman of God, through the vision. But, there's no but. If God said the land is for you, and he's showing you how to get to the land, how to conquer the land, how to, how to enter into the land and what to do in the land, and he's going to give you that piece by piece. He never gives it to us all at once, but he's directing you through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. There is no but. Stay in prayer. Just because you get the land, just because you walk in the land, your prayer, your fasting has to increase. You haven't been this way before. And so what got you here is not going to sustain you. You're dealing with a new territory, an enlargement of territory. There are new things that you're going to deal with. New spirits, new people, new revelation. And so stay tuned with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It calls for more fasting, more prayer, more studying the Word of God, listening, listening, knowing, and sensing the voice of God, hearing. You also have to know, hear, and sense, and realize, recognize the actions and the movement of the enemy because if you are only focused on the fruit you'll miss the tactic of the enemy you'll miss that the enemy that is there is only there to frustrate you and to, to, to bind your hands for the work that God has for you to do be 10 steps ahead of the enemy and the only way you can do that is staying in prayer Getting in the Word of God, waiting for the directions of the Holy Spirit. We're giving out keys today because we believe that God gave you the land. God led you to a place. He led you to a ministry. He led you to open a business, expand it. He led you to your career. He led you to interact with certain people. He led you to that new neighborhood. He led you to that car dealership. He led you there. I know you went to the hospital, but he led you there to pray. It's a new territory. It says, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, that giant. But you were sent for a purpose. You were called to a position. And your position you were called to was meant that someone will be set free and delivered. That that territory belongs to the Lord our God. It was given unto you because God wants to do some things through you. He didn't call you to that new territory, to that new position just to sit and hold a title and just to say, look what I've done. I have arrived. Your position calls for work. Your position of new territory, of enlarged territory is about a function, not a title. He's called you to something.
And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. And so you got to the land and you begin to survey the land and you saw all of these obstacles. And, and before you could really get started, you've already backed up because the enemy has sent a sense of fear and frustration to say, wait a minute, I thought this new territory was going to be easy street. I thought this new territory I was just going to get to come and eat off the sweet nectar and I'm in this cushy position and, and, and I worked so in that last position when I get into this new position into this new territory you know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have I'm gonna be able to relax a little bit but I came by to tell you not so that new position requires more where much is given much is required uh, new territory enlarged means increase of responsibility and so if you're not ready Stop asking God to enlarge your territory. You see, for so long we've had the mindset that enlarge, I'll enlarge my territory because I want a new house, I want a new car, and and I I, I want to exp no 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 N enlarge my territory is a responsibility of souls. It's a responsibility of studying and ministering God's word to His people. It's a responsibility of praying that the lost may come into the knowledge of Christ. It is a responsibility that someone is set free and delivered, that their minds are changed, that yokes are destroyed, that healing is taking place, that cancers are destroyed in one's body for a testimony telling of the goodness and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. New territory, enlarged territory, has nothing to do with your personal gain. It is a territory, it is an enlargement of labor. It's work. It's where you get your hands dirty. It's where you sweat and labor. Because the new and enlarged territory has to be tilled. It has to be worked. It has to be turned upside down. The old has to be plucked up and cast out from the root. God has something he wants there. And he sent you to till the land. He sent you to turn things upside down. He sent you to work that enlarged new territory to build upon. For his glory, for his honor. We'll be back in just a moment. If you are looking for a place of worship, I would like to invite you to True Life Community Worship Center. The address is 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida 33617. Every Sunday morning, True U University begins at 9 o'clock a.m., Morning worship begins at 10.30 a.m. Wednesdays, 7 o'clock p.m. is Bible study. The leaders of this great house are Senior Pastor Calvin Green and Pastor Angela Green. Once again, that is True Life Community Worship Center, 7402 North 56th Street, Building 600, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Also, if you are in the New Jersey area, I'd love for you to visit Faith Outreach Deliverance Church under the leadership of Apostle Roma D. Allen Sr. and Pastor Lillian C. Allen. The address is 100 South Pine Street, Bridgeton, New Jersey, 08302. Sunday school begins every Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Morning worship, 11 o'clock a.m. Every Wednesday, Bible study begins at 7 o'clock p.m. And on Fridays at 7 o'clock p.m. is evangelistic services. If you would like us to mention your ministry while on the air, please feel free to email us at aferguson.wrp at yahoo.com. Subject, our ministry. Give us the details of your church name, your leader, and the address and the time of services, and we will air it for you. 
If you have just tuned in, you have tuned in to The Balance of Life, and I am Elder Angel Ferguson. I truly, truly thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing, and, and we're discussing giants in the land, what comes with that enlarged territory. But I want you to be encouraged, because surely that God saw fit to place you in this enlarged territory. He knows that you can handle what's there. Before we went to break, we did share with you how the report came back about the giants in the land. And I, I know that it's flowing with milk and honey, but there was a but. And I'm going to go over to uh, Numbers 14 and 6. And it says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. That's an awesome word. It says, But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And so I, I'm reading that because I want you to get this in your spirit. How long will you provoke God? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have shown among them? How long will you not trust God? How long will you err not to believe him? How long? How long? What is it going to take? He has done signs and wonders before you. He has done miraculous things, but he brought you to this area, and I know that there are giants in the land, and you're saying this looks to be a bit too much for me, but trust him. If he said it, and you're moving by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, He shall bring it to pass. Do the work of the Lord. Do as he is calling you to do. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That is his word. And his word will not return unto him void. It shall accomplish that which he sent it out to do. And it shall be. I pray that the word that we share with you today is encouragement to you where you are. Fret not. God wants to do a work through you. Take your eyes off of the giant. Follow the instructions of God. He's going to lead you through the Holy Spirit on what to pray for. Pray for and receive the spirit of discernment so you can actually see what those giants are and you'll know what to bind up on earth as it is in heaven for, for the fulfillment of God's promises. I absolutely love you here. If God prolongs this coming, we will meet tomorrow. Have a blessed day.